for joining me on yet another exciting episode of The Property Show, unlocking investment opportunities in the sector. We have lined up a great show with a fresh look on uncharted waters in the legal process of property acquisition. Catch that conversation later on our expert segment. As soon as you identify the home you want to buy, you go to a legal expert who will do the background due diligence. Our property pick of the week takes us to the vibrant Kasarani neighborhood, home to famous top hotels, retail centers, education institutions, and the Moy International Sports Center to view a new complex of three bedroom modern apartments with spacious rooms as well as excellent finishes. We'll also explore the evolving commercial market on differentiated emerging trends with high yield returns. On the accessory spot, we share ideal designs, colors, and lighting solutions for the office space, as well as alternative rugs for every season. On our home ownership segment, it's all about home sweet home with an interesting story of a couple relocating from the diaspora. Have some plans for future because you don't know for how long you'll be there. And there's some countries that you cannot live without like a resident permit or a work permit. Mm. You have to have those documents for you to be there. And when they decide not to renew the permit, you have to come back home. We know the drill. Our social media handles is where we get interactive. Let's get started. As always, there is something for everyone. Let's head off to the vibrant and fast-growing neighborhood of Kasarani. This vibrant neighborhood has everything from top hotels, retail centers, residential estates, education institutions, as well as the Moy International Sports Center, making this area called ideal for family living. Our property pick of the week is located in this fast growing neighborhood, hidden just a few minutes drive from the main road. This modern complex comes with spacious separate living and dining area, excellent finishes, large windows allowing a lot of natural light. The kitchen stands out with granite countertops and lots of storage cabinets. Eden Brook, let's have a look. Edenbrook Apartments is located in the fast-growing neighborhood of Kasarani along Thika Superhighway. This modern complex consists of 36 three-bedroom apartments with a plinth area of 130 square meters. Accommodation features include spacious separate living and dining rooms, laminate floor on sitting room improving the aesthetics of the house, large windows allowing in natural light, a spacious kitchen that stands out with granite countertops as well as top and bottom cabinets for storage. Three bedrooms, master ensuite. Other amenities shall include cover paved roads, street lighting, electric fence, 24-hour CCTV and 24-hour guide patrol for security, two parking lots per house, a borehole, a recreational park and a modern clubhouse and commercial facilities. This project is in close proximity to Kasurani Police Station, further boosting the security of the area. The units are ready for occupation.
project is ready for occupation. And guess what? This is one of the projects you'll see in our next signature bus tour. Book a seat and come spend a day with us and get a one-on-one -on -one interaction with our legal and financial experts. Um, we saw some very nice furnished, we saw townhouses, uh, we saw apartments in Kiambu. So it gave me a very good um, just overview of the different properties that, that are there and the different things that you can do. Um, which for me definitely would not have happened if I was going by myself. I would not have been able to see those properties. One of the things also that um, for me this bus tour stood out for me is that we were able to have the different partners in the bus. Each, each bus had um, somebody from the legal side and we had a financial institution. So the idea was that any questions that you had would be able to be addressed as you're going through, as you're seeing the property. And, and, I, and I really liked that because many people sometimes um, are not very sure about what it involves getting your first property, the legal process. And even in terms of the financial, just understanding that it is possible for you to be able to afford property where you are at. It doesn't have to be very expensive. There are ways that you can go about it. I would definitely recommend that somebody comes on the property show bus tour because there's a whole range of properties for you to see from low income to high income and uh, the fact that you have both from apartments to maisonettes there's a good range of products for you to look at. Having the legal and also the financiers on board at least from the legal side we got a lot of detail as to what the process is when it comes to buying a property and even as well from the finance side we did give an, a, a, get an idea of what percentage you can be given if you're employed or unemployed so that gives you an idea when it comes to budgeting. I've put a tick on some but I still like to do maybe one or more tours because I know you go in different directions of the city so definitely I look at that uh, before making a final decision. Next, let's hear from a legal expert. Our expert segment is all about uncharted waters in the legal process of property acquisition. Let's hear more. Why is legal counsel very important in property acquisition. Legal counsel or legal advice is very important because you're dealing with an expert who has experience in whatever you want to do. So if you're pro uh, you want to acquire property, you're dealing with someone who has experience, has gone through the processes several times before with different people and is able to protect your interests. At what point should somebody willing to buy a house contact a lawyer? I think it is important the moment you see that house and you feel like this is a journey I want to take, before you sign the letter of offer, it is important that you get a legal professional to look at the letter of offer. This is because you find that most of the time buyers come to you when they have already signed a letter of offer and if you realize most letters of offer have a clause in there saying that the, the buyer will sign an agreement for sale in standard terms within 30 days for example. So that by the time you've signed the letter of offer you've already bound yourself to certain obligations. So it is important that as soon as you identify the home you want to buy you go to a legal expert who will do the background due diligence and guide you through the letter of offer stage. Remember that a letter of offer is actually a contract. So once you sign it, you've bound yourself to a contract. And I've seen a lot of people losing money because if you're not able to complete the transaction, there's a clause that says that you will lose some deposit. Exactly. And, and what you will find is that that clause starts at the letter of offer stage. So once you sign it, you've already bound yourself to, if you are unable to proceed with the transaction, you will lose money. Now, what you will find is that in uh, legal documentation and in the uh, property acquisition process, that because 
you as the home buyer have made a promise so as to speak to the developer of the home or to the seller of the home that you're going to buy, then if then you opt out of the transaction, then in standard practice, you will lose a percentage of the purchase price and in most instances, the deposit that you paid. As a legal expert, what would you advise Kenyans? Should they buy property in cash or should they go through the mortgage process? Uh, what and I, what is safer? What I'll tell you, Nancy, is that um, either of the options is good. What you need to do is to make sure that there are legal safeguards in the property documentation, in the sales documentation. So, for example, if you're taking a mortgage, there are the processes that you have to follow and you have to ensure that then those are safeguarded within the contract. So if you're, if you're approaching the bank, there will be the letter of offer that you will be given. The, the bank will have to do the, the risk assessment and the credit analysis on you. And uh, they will have to instruct lawyers to draft the security documentation. So at that stage, it is important that the seller is aware that you're buying the property by mortgage. And if uh, a lawyer, your lawyer will then ensure that in the sale agreement, it is indicated that you're a financed purchaser, number one, and number two, at the completion of the transaction, that is what we as lawyers call completion date. On the completion date, instead of cash, then there is a, an exchange of a professional undertaking with the completion documents. This is to prevent you from getting to the completion and being charged interest because you don't have cash, yet you're taking a mortgage. Now, on the other hand, if you're buying the property in cash, what you need to do is to ensure that on the completion date, even as you exchange cash for completion documents, there is a stake, uh, there is a safeguard there by your lawyers insisting that the balance is held on either an escrow account or on stakeholder basis until you finalize the registration process. This is to prevent a situation where you've already paid a seller the cash and uh, you are unable to successfully register and then you are unable to get your money back. So if it is held on stakeholder basis or it is uh, held in an escrow account, you know that in the event anything happens, then your money is safeguarded. But a lot of times when people are going to buy cash, yes. one, they get a very huge discount. True. And secondly, mm. it's almost like it's a deal. Yes. What would you advise uh, Kenyans who are buying cash, assuming it's a deal? Um, as much as it is a deal, your interests must be protected. Because uh, we are always told when a deal is too good, you need to think twice. So you have to ensure that your interests are well protected so that if you're buying cash, what are the documents that the seller is giving you at the point in which you even uh, agree on, is it an installment plan or is it uh, outright cash? Then. Uh, if, for example, the vendor insists on you paying 100% cash at the point you're getting into the transaction, then you have to sit back and ask yourself, is this really safe? Is the discount so good that I am willing to risk it all just to take advantage of a small percentage discount in the, in the purchase price? So at all instances, you must ensure that even if you want to take advantage of a discount, your interests are well documented and protected through the legal documentation. So you're well covered all along. Yes. What documentation does a buyer need to provide during a property transaction? Um, so at different stages, there are different documents that you will need. At the inception of the transaction, you will definitely need your identity documentation. Most sellers will want, if you are a company, they would want you to provide the certificate of incorporation and the identity documents of the directors. You'll also need your PIN uh, certificate. And what you will see now is that because of the government initiative, your PIN must be ITAX registered for you to be able to go through the entire process. If, if you do not have your national identity card, then you will need your passport, but you have to have a form of 
uh, uh, identity documentation. Apart from that, when you're going towards the completion of the transaction, you, you will definitely need your colored passport photographs. Because of the fraudulent dealing with land, it is a legal requirement that you have uh, colored passport photographs that will be attached on the transfer documentation that will be signed. Do I need to show proof of funds? Yes, most sellers, uh, if, if you find a lawyer acting for a seller, they would want to know where are you getting this fund. So if you're being financed, they would ask for a letter of intent from the bank or even a letter of offer so that at the completion stage they know that there is a bank financing you and you will be able to give a, an undertaking at that point. If you're a cash purchaser, they would also require proof of funds. You are aware about the anti-money laundering and proceeds of crime act which uh, requires the the sellers to actually know that the monies that you're putting into the purchase of the property are not from proceeds of crime so it is important then that they are able to demonstrate that so proof of funds is also important then you know at the end of the transaction you will need funds for stamp duty you will need funds for uh, registration all those so associated costs. costs so you need to be prepared with respect to that Property is financially significant and legally complex. It always makes a difference if you work with an experienced legal counsel with a strong industry understanding and specialized knowledge. Here at The Property Show, we work with legal experts across the board and we'll be happy to connect you. Next, let's explore the evolving commercial market on emerging trends achieving high yield returns. We head off to the Upper Hill neighborhood, a hotspot for multinationals. Upper Hill is currently taking credit for being known as a well-connected business district in Nairobi with various prestigious commercial spaces coming up in the area. The location offers proximity to the city center while still being within easy reach of Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. In this neighborhood, you'll be spoiled for grade A executive offices with wide open spaces and stunning 360 degrees views of the city. Let's have a look at Flamingo Towers, ready for occupation with an option to customize your offices. At Flamingo Towers, expect 24-hour security, CCTV cameras and access to high-speed internet. Having been in the industry for the time that we've been in and having started selling and letting uh, Flamingo, um, some of the inquiries that are coming to us uh, on uh, space that these clients require is basically um, accessibility to, to some amenities that are within the location that we are in. Our building pretty much has interests from lawyers and doctors and the location where the building is in it has quite close proximity to such amenities. So we have the Ministry of Lands, we have the law courts, we have the Kenyatta Hospital, we have Nairobi Hospital. So most of the clients want to have this proximity to uh, such places. And also the fact that we are actually only a few minutes to the CBD. So anybody who is looking for space will ask for such questions. How far is it to the CBD? How far is this to this um, place? Uh, how far is it to maybe a certain um, office within the area? So basically it's um, proximity to some of these amenities. So Flamingo Towers is an 18-story building located in Upper Hill. 
uh, situated in um, along Mara Road, right off um, Hill Lena. We're between the Japanese Embassy and the British High Commission, uh, which also provides a security filler for the building because um, you know that um, the security of the, the two institutions is quite high. So we get that aspect of uh, having a high security in the area. The building is about 147,000 square feet um, in terms of gross letterable space. Uh, currently, we have about 95,000 square feet remaining uh, of letterable space, which we are hoping um, that will be able to interest the market to come and take possession within this year. Letterable space is basically what can be taken on lease basis or what can be taken on a purchase basis. So we are doing both selling and both letting. Currently we are letting at 80 shillings per square foot uh, and 25 shillings service charge, so a total of 105 shillings per square foot basically. And then we are selling at 11,000 per square foot uh, plus VAT and parking at 1.4 million Kenya shillings. We do have um, tenants and purchasers on site. Um, most of the already occup uh, occupiers in the building are either lawyers, uh, we have engineers, uh, we have uh, religious organizations, we actually have uh, county uh, government bodies on site, we have government bodies on site. Generally, it, it's a mixture of um, professionals uh, in the country who are basically setting up their offices here. So the nature of clientele that we are looking at uh, is basically professionals. Professionals meaning still the lawyers, um, engineers, consultants, the financial institutions, we are looking at insurance, audit firms, um, basically uh, corporates and SMEs that want to set up their offices, then they are welcome at Flamingo Tower. So we have two wings in the building designated for such companies. The future for Flamingo Towers, as I had mentioned, we have about 95,000 square feet remaining. So we would definitely want to uh, be able to have sold that uh, within 2019, either selling or letting it out. So for us, we do believe that this is the year for us to basically have everybody on site and enjoying this fabulous space that we have. Brandon and Company Advocates is a law firm that was established about six years ago in Nairobi. We major in civil and criminal matters and commercial matters. First and foremost, my previous office was at Pension Towers in town. One of the things I was looking for was an office that has the ability to meet up to my clientele, but also that would give me room for expansion. So I was looking for a place that is accessible, number one. Number two, I was looking for a place that would be able to meet my requirements in terms of space and more importantly, a place that could meet my clientele. We looked for various buildings in Nairobi together with my staff. We managed to view a couple of buildings, maybe five or six. And one day when we were driving on, uh, on Mara Road, we decided to pop into Flamingo Towers. We saw the space and we liked the place. One thing that is uh, very nice about Flamingo Towers when I came was the view that it has towards the city. It basically captures most of the traffic routes and for us as lawyers, it gives us the ability to go to court because it's near the courts and it's also very near the Ministry of Lands where our core activities are based on. I say I'm favoured to be in the Flamingo because the business I do suits well uh, with the building. One, I'm in telecommunication and uh, I'm also in broadcasting. Most of our clients would want to access us easily and being here, they find it is more convenient for them to walk in and also to drive in and also to commute by public means. The business we are doing requires ampias, good ampias like what we have. We require uh, space 
which we got here. We also uh, require presentation, a good building, because Elgad is everything in business. You cannot uh, uh, trade with the international community and you are living in a building which does not give that prestige. So the business we are in also comes with the prestige and uh, elegance that uh, people would want to associate themselves uh, with, with the good things. And uh, that's why we, we settled here. market is moving from oversupply to stabilizing position as Nairobi continues to reinforce its position as the regional commercial hub of the sub-Saharan Africa. If you're looking for an office to establish or grow your business, here at the Property Show, we have a selection of premium offices in prime areas and we'll be happy to get you started. Later on, we'll catch an interesting story on East or West home is best, with a couple relocating from the diaspora, plus other investment opportunities available in the market. We are taking a short break. Don't go away. Keep it property show. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. Coming up, ideal designs, colors, and lighting solutions for the office space, as well as alternative rugs for every season, the accessory spots. A well-designed office is more than just a great-looking place. It's an essential marketing tool showcasing the company's brand and identity to anyone who walks in. Unique, creative and playful workplaces are fast catching up. You always want to inspire your employees and make them feel comfortable and productive. When deciding what color to use in your office, an obvious choice might be to go with your brand colors. However, consider the connotations and psychological effects of those colors. Green. The color of nature is associated with growth and promotes feelings of balance. It's not only limited to paintings, you can infuse that with plants that not only offer aesthetic value but improves the quality of air, reducing stress subsequently. Red. is also a good color to consider. It's emotionally intense, and when people see it, their reactions become faster and they gain an energetic boost. For blue, it is commonly accepted as one of the most productive colors and is the most common favorite color around the world, perhaps because it is the color of the sky and the sea. Blue is calming and it typically makes us feel stable and at peace. Lighting also impacts on productivity, making it an important factor in the office. Increased levels of natural light encourages the appearance of office plants, which will always make the aesthetics of the office better and lower workplace stress levels. It's important to position desks so that they receive a good amount of natural light. Artificial lighting is also advisable. Use full spectrum bulbs that simulate daylight to keep the light soft and warm. Spotlights are also a good choice. You could also consider investing in reflective office furniture to help reflect light and create a light and airy feel.
rugs. Rugs are a perfect choice to lighten our mood and they define areas. However, not all rugs are cut from the same cloth, some from wool, bamboo to cotton, and selecting a rug to liven up a living room or add a cool feel can be daunting. You can opt to take a color from one rug and incorporate it on another to create a mix and a pop of color. If you decide to go for bold colors for your rugs, it gives you a chance to keep some of your accessories neutral. You can also match color in your cushions and lampshades. It's important to lay your rugs opposite ways. This will instantly imply different uses within the room. The accessory spot is where we've got you covered on decorating ideas for indoor and outdoor spaces. East or West, home is best. I know we've heard that saying a million times, but what next? After working in the diaspora for so many years and are finally ready to come back home. Let's get that conversation from our guests today on their home search and what influenced their decision to get into the real estate industry while in a faraway land. where I've been working for the last 16 years. You know, I decided to come and settle back home as we prepare to retire. I've also been working there in a mining company, but it came to a time whereby we had to come back home and also prepare ourselves because you cannot live in diaspora forever. You have to come back home at some point. Yeah. We started preparing uh, to get a house um, four years before we came back, we saved slowly to get a house here in Kenya. And finally we got, we invested in a house of which uh, for those years we and, uh, rented it out. It was a journey to get uh, a house you want to, to live or to invest in. Because I had to come physically here. After I searched a lot of houses on uh, on the net, I doing a lot of calls in Kenya. But finally, I settled on one, of which I had to involve a lot of people because of the language jargon, especially in uh, investment or in building. There are a lot of hiccups because not most of the people they know the house they want. Is it uh, at the quality they want? Because mm. you have to involve a lot of people like quantity surveyor to advise you, the valuers, structural engineers, architects, for you to be sure of all oh, the thing is quality. To add on that, yeah, uh, for me, uh, I really had to encourage him, like, uh, we need to, like, buy a house because building when you are abroad it's very 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 hard you cannot be able to send money and rely on people to be doing the job on your behalf so it was easier for him to come identify the house and then we go through that process of buying yeah so like for him he started doing the saving long way back before we decided yes but we knew from very long time ago that we need to buy a house in Kenya so that the moment we decide to come back we are coming back to something we are not starting from scratch the financing we had saved some money then we took a, a short time mortgage by one of the banks in uh, Kenya who financed a bit of what we had. We had to consider about the security. Yeah. Security is very paramount. And uh, the distance for our children to school. That was another factor. Another factor was uh, water supply. And uh, 
we didn't want to settle in a noisy place. Mm. Mm. And also an up market area whereby we know that in future the value of the house will be appreciating as time goes by. The process took like uh, three months mm. to finalize the deal because the house has, they have to do valuation report. Uh, the lawyers they have to communicate to each other with the buyer. They have to do the search for the title. I mean the title deed, eh? To make sure it's a uh, genuine. Mm. Then the delay came from because the lawyer from Kenya to Botswana, there was delay in communication. Mm. And also there was a lot of paperwork involved. Lot, yeah. Because they remember every time we have to go to the lawyers with you know, papers coming, you know. Each and every time, yes. Yeah? So you have to go back to the lawyers. Mm. They need to certify the document. You need to, you know, courier the documents back to Kenya. You know, there was a lot of that kind of work here. Yeah. What I can say about the real estate, the reason why I decided to invest in it is because you can go wrong and the demand will always be there. Mm. Yeah. So um, land, it's scanty. So the demand for housing, it will always be there. So yeah, I think that's the reason why we decided to venture into that area. I have to advise someone who is living in diaspora is East or West, home is the best. Mm -hmm. They have to invest at home. Yeah. Because either way, they have to come back home. Yeah. Sorry to see either sick, dead, or alive. Yes. Alive is uh, coming back to retire. Yeah. Where will you retire too? Yeah, and another thing, you know, when you're working outside the country, you never know whether your contract will be renewed after the term that you've been given, yeah? So it's always good to, like, um, have some plans for future because you don't know for how long you'll be there. And there's some countries that you cannot live without, like a resident permit or a work permit. Mm. You have to have those documents for you to be there. And when they decide not to renew the permit, you have to come back home. So you need to really make good plans for yourself and for your family if you have one, because you cannot just live for so many years abroad and then come back with nothing. So those are some of the things that people, especially who are living abroad, they should be doing. While you, you're still enjoying life there, you should still think about your future plan and where you'd want to be because definitely living abroad, yes, you might be there for a while, but not forever. This segment is where we share stories and advice on how to get you started onto the property ladder. And guess what? The next stepping stone for an aspiring homeowner is your experience. Give us a call and let's share your story. Up next, other investment options available in the market, the property gallery. Boston Estate is conveniently located along the Nairobi Namanga Road, just 8 kilometers from Kitengela Town, in a quiet and serene environment. These three and four bedroomed homes are an impressive development of 64 units sitting on 50 by 100 each. The plinth area for the four bedroom missionettes is 185 square meters, while the three bedroom missionettes is 166 square meters. Accommodation facilities include spacious living area fitted with large windows that allow in natural light. The spacious dining area, the kitchen area is not only spacious but also fitted with granite countertops, upper and lower cabinets. The master bedroom is en suite, fitted with spacious cupboards and a large window that allows in natural light. The second and third bedroom share a common bathroom. Detached en suite DSQ, 
utility area, Fin Heights Apartments. Located in Dagorati of Kikuyu Road, this development comprises of 28 modern two- and three-bedroom apartment units. With their strategic location just 100 meters off Kikuyu Road, the apartments are easily accessible. There is also easy access to Nairobi CBD and Westlands using Naivasha Road and the airport using the Southern Bypass. Accommodation features include spacious lounge come dining area making it easy to operate in both areas without difficulties, modern fitted kitchen with granite countertops which are durable and also add a fine touch to this space. The pantry is adjoined to the kitchen to provide sufficient storage for foodstuffs and kitchen products, common cloakroom for the guests and separate dobby area where you can do your laundry with ease. The two and three bedrooms have inbuilt wardrobe closets which act as storage space and the master bedroom ensuite giving you a chance to relax in your own private space. The Olive Estate is a nicely designed gated development that consists of three bedroom all en suite bungalows which are fitted with the modern day utilities that perfectly fit your family's needs with a plinth area of 148 square meters. This development is ideally 30 minutes from the CBD of Thicker Road on Kenyatta Road, exit 14, just 4 kilometers from the superhighway on Tarmac. Accommodation features include spacious lounge leading to the kitchen area, American-style open-plan kitchen, method to be fitted with cabinets for storage purposes and pantry area for extra storage space, separate spacious dining area, ensuite bedrooms to be fitted with inbuilt closets, visitors' cloakroom where visitors can freshen up during their visit, large windows to allow in light, also giving a beautiful overview of the area and are fitted with grills for security purposes. Social amenities include perimeter wall with electric fence which provides tight security in the area also with a 24-7 man guard at the gate. Live fences to separate the houses, entry porch in front of the house, garage or parking, sewer lines by use of biodigesters, the entire estate will be cover paved. Enka Gardens Kitengela responds to the growing desire to live in a peaceful, beautiful and secure gated community with modern amenities. This 10-acre piece of land offers 50 by 100 acre service plots with a perimeter wall already in place. Enka Gardens offer an opportunity to build your home in a controlled development while offering you in-house consultancy on construction. Located 200 meters from the Nairobi Namanga Highway, Enka Gardens is 4 kilometers from Kitengela Town. Whether you're looking for an apartment or a standalone house to call home, here at the Property Show, we have a rich portfolio of properties allowing you to put your preference at the heart of your search. Visit our offices and let's begin this exciting venture together. Let me finish by answering the one question I get asked all the time. Is the growing real estate market a hype or a reality?
Well, in today's market, I see a number of areas offering good value and potential for sound capital appreciation across board over the medium and long term, as many young professionals are now increasingly eager to gain a foothold on the property ownership ladder. I also see a good level of uptake in smaller units with reduced maintenance costs in areas opening up from infrastructure development. To answer your question, real estate is definitely a reality. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Keep your questions coming and let's continue this conversation on our social media handles. See you next week. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri! Mm -hmm.